Now today I'll be showing how to test and replace ignition coil packs on a late model Acura. Now very quickly I'm going to show how to test the packs without a scan tool. But if you want to skip all that and you just want to jump right into it on how to remove the coil packs, look in the description box below. I'll note on the time on where to fast forward. So if it's probably two minutes in this video, just fast forward. You'll get right to it. That being said, let's begin. So in this case, we're working on a 2006 Acura TL. You will find this sort of configuration on many, many Acuras. In other words, a transverse or side-mounted engine and cylinders four, five, and six. These are the coil packs. Underneath these are the spark plugs. So cylinder four, five, six. In the rear, we have one, two, and three. Quite easy to get to and also to test. So the first step is just removing this plastic cover. In the rear are just rubber grommets, don't have to worry about that. In the front we have three flat head plastic fasteners, just rotate them 90 degrees and they pop right out. Okay, so again, one, two, three, and the rear just pops up. Just be gentle with these. There, here we go, that's it, comes right out again in the in the rear you just have these rubber grommets. Very, very simple. Now chances are you're watching this because you have a scan tool and the tool is telling you you have one bad ignition coil or more than one bad coil. But let's say for argument's sake you do not have a scan tool, it's late at night, you're, you just want to quickly check if you have a bad coil. How do you do it? Well, two ways. Number one is start the vehicle. This is called a power balance test. You start the vehicle and as the vehicle is running, you're going to disconnect the harness connector to each coil pack. You should hear that the vehicle now runs worse. It won't run smooth or smoothly, but also the RPMs will drop. And that's a very good thing. That's a good sign that the coil pack is firing and also the fuel injector is working correctly. But if you disconnect the harness connector and the vehicle has no change whatsoever, then you have a, either a bad coil pack or injector. And I have a separate video showing on how to test injectors. Today we're just dealing with coil packs. So let's quickly do that test. So if you take a look at the harness connector, you have at the three o'clock position there's a tab. You press in the tab, don't pull from the wiring, pull from the body. There you go. And that's how you disconnect the harness connector. So this is cylinders four, five, and six. One, two, and three, you'll see a little bit later how to get access to them, but let's just quickly do this test. So here we go, we'll start with cylinder number four. And I can certainly hear it, I'm not sure if you can pick that up. Let's take a look at the RPMs. Now I'm not too sure if the camera picked up the engine running as well, but that's why I wanted to show you the RPM gauge. When I disconnect the harness connector, the, the RPMs go down. When I reconnect the harness connector, the RPM went back up and the car ran well again. Now you can quickly test the coil pack. Let me just quickly show you this and then we'll get right onto it. Now again, if you do have a late model vehicle, you really should have a scan tool. They're inexpensive. I'll have a link to uh, one that I often use that's around 40 bucks. It does a really good job. But again, if you do not have a scan tool, you can do this test using a digital multimeter. This is $20 off Amazon. Your local auto parts stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Home Centers, they all sell them for roughly $20 to $25. Super simple to use. You have a lot of different tests you can do with the multimeter. In our case, we want the Omega symbol. And this is known as an ohms or a resistance test. So take a look at the coil pack. And if we take a look, a little hard to get on camera here. Actually, let me do this one. This one may be a little bit easier for you guys to see. Make sure my light is on. Let me turn on my light. And what we're going to do, there we go. You have three prongs. One, two, there we go. One, two, three. So all that I'm doing is uh, my multimeter is on the omega setting or the resistance ohm setting. And there are two leads coming from the multimeter, a black lead and a red lead. 
I'm just taking one lead, can be black or red, doesn't make a difference, touching the first prong, and then the red lead will touch the third prong. And we should see at least one mega ohm. Okay, now this is not 100% foolproof. You really should have a scan tool, but again, this is a pretty good guide, a pretty good guide that this will tell you if your coil pack is good or not. So just watch that screen again. One lead going to prong number one, the other lead to prong number three. You want to see at least one mega ohm. And we have roughly nine mega ohms. Now typically the colder the vehicle is, the higher this number will be. The warmer the vehicle is, the lower this will be. But you do not want to see anything under one mega ohm. Now just in case if that is Greek to you, let me quickly show you, and I promise we will get right to it. I just, I just like to cover the bases here. So if I, again, connect this, you see how you have that letter M on the display. That stands for mega. If you do this test and you see, let's say, for example, 9 kilo, in other words, you see a K instead of an M, then that's way too low. So you want to make sure you have at least one mega ohm. Get yourself an auto ranging like this one is. Auto ranging multimeter makes takes all of the guesswork out of doing this test. Okay, enough. Let's replace them. Now there's a top cover, as you can see here, and there are some grommets in the rear. And on the front, you have these flat head plastic screws, which really aren't screws. They're just in place. Once you rotate this 90 degrees, there you go. Then the back again, they're just grommets. Just like before, this one's a little chipped up, but it fits right back here in the engine. So in the front here, you have cylinders number four, five, and six. One, two, and three is in the rear. We'll grab those in a, in a second. So these are your coil packs. On top, you have your harness connectors that we need to remove first. And then the coil packs are held in by a six millimeter hex bolt. Now, where my thumb is, just press on the tab. Don't pull from the wiring. Press on the tab and pull up. Okay. And let's go ahead and remove the coil pack one by one. So I'll show you how to remove number four, number five, and six. Once you see this first one, obviously you'll be able to remove these as well. But again, this is a six millimeter. And let's give it a good tug and the reason why I've chosen an Allen wrench here is because you can choose the uh, adapters that you can attach to a ratchet but it gets very close once you get close to this overflow bottle from the radiator so this just makes the job a little bit easier at least for me okay so this is your coil and the spark plug it lives down here in the engine. Now before we remove number six here, the overflow coming from the radiator will be in the way. So on the bottom is, it looks like a 10 millimeter bolt. We'll remove that and just lift this out of the way. Now obviously make sure the vehicle is cool when you do this. So we'll do this. Okay, let me go ahead and get a wrench. So right where the wrench is, again is where this bolt is located and this is a ratcheting wrench these are terrific to have if you plan on doing your own auto repair definitely grab them okay little bracket and just place this to the side and there we go Now to get the cylinders one, two, and three, we have to remove the strut bar. And to remove the strut bar, we have some plastic tabs here again. So right here is a tab. Pull that back. Now 
Now let me just show you where these coil packs live. So this is the firewall of the vehicle. Passenger side, that's cylinder number one, cylinder number two, and number three is right there. Now if you have small enough hands and enough strength, you can remove those coil packs without removing this uh, strut bar. But that being said, I'm going to remove it just because I like having more working room, but it's also a lot easier to film. You'll be able to see what I'm doing with this removed. Now what I'm going to do very quickly on the back of the bar is a 10 millimeter bolt. Let's see where, you, where we are, the passenger side. And then on the driver's side, another guy right there, okay? Okay, now these bolts are in fact not 13 but 12 millimeter. Now these bolts can be relatively tight. If you have a tough time removing them, what you can do is grab yourself another socket, place it over the end of the ratchet, and have an extension. So this gives you a lot more leverage to break these loose. like I did miss one 10 millimeter bolt right there. Now this has been on here for a number of years. Just trying to break it up here. Now it's still a little bit tight. I'm just taking a flathead. This is the strut mount on top. I don't want to scratch anything. Make sure everything is clear. Okay. Okay, so cylinder number one here. Okay. I like the Allen key again because it does give me some working room to do what I need to do here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, there you go. Here. Okay. So we're going to start with number one here. Again, where my thumb is, press down the tab. There we go. Should have done that first, but there we go. All right. Just to give you another view, this is what we're doing.
So just let the car run, make sure that everything is in good shape. As you can see, the RPMs are nice and solid and you'll be in good shape. So as you can see, very simple to do. This being a Honda, the coil packs are inexpensive. So save yourself on the labor, do it yourself. If you don't have a scan tool, invest in one because they're worth every single dime. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.